What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Are you ready to experience 1994? Well, if so, cue the music. <laughs> All right, here we go. We have the AMT Ertl 1994 Corvette Convertible right here in my hands and I really hope you enjoy this kit. So now without further ado, let's spin the record as we go all the way down to our table where me and Danny the dog are gonna take a look at this amazing model. 1994 was a year of refinements for Corvette. The LT1 engine received a new sequential fuel injection system and a hotter ignition system. The result was a smoother running, easier starting engine than in past years although the overall power output remained the same. There was also interior improvements, like the cloth seats were dropped, and you also got two new colors, a blue and a copper. So here we're gonna be looking at AMT Ertl's Corvette 50th Anniversary Edition of the 1994 Corvette Convertible. This is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up, and is molded in 125th scale. On this side of the box, we get these wonderful pictures of the built model. There's the interior underneath the hood and the side profile, as well as the skill level rating, which we see this is a moderate kit for skill level two for ages 10 and up and will require glue and paint. And on this side of the box, we see some of the other Corvettes in the history here in photographs, as well as a nice front three quarter view of our 94 Corvette convertible. So now let's take the lid off this most radical model kit and check out the bodacious interior. So here we have the body as well as the glass, the instructions which Danny the dog will look at, and then we've got our chrome components with what looks like brand new wheels molded in there. There's our underbody or chassis, and then we've got this nice parts tree with the engine on it. And then our exhaust system. We also have the top and the X frame in there. And then we've got more wheels. And then we've got our interior tub and hood detail, a bag containing more of our glass and tires, and the little steering wheel. Hey everybody, this is Danny the Dog once again to bring you all the news about the latest instruction sheet for this video. So right here we've got the LT1 Corvette Convertible by AMT Ertl. And now, if Trevor, you can just put that stick in my mouth, I can begin with the overhead mic and show everybody what's going on. Yum. So here we have this wonderful illustration of the Corvette coming right at you. And up there you can see that Trevor bought this thing on June 7, 2003 at Walmart for $4.95. Wow! You can't get a model like that anymore. Maybe from a flea market. I don't like flea markets. Anyway, uh, the 1994 Corvette here says it evolved into the best vet yet, and the Roadster embodies all that the original Corvette promised and more. So you can read more about this. Trevor's going to put this down in the description of the video below. And then down here we've got our important recommendations here, and then some of the tools and whatnot you need to build this model. Now here in our first illustration, we've got our engine assembly going together. Here you've got your right and left hand engine block as well as the transmission and the transmission plate. And here we've got our oil pan going up underneath. Now panel two is subassembly B. And here we have our cylinder heads. And then we've got our chrome intake manifold and the top of our injection plenum. And then we've got our chrome water pump and front cover here. We've got a starter motor, it's paint aluminum, that glues on there. And then here it says to note the location of the upper hose right here. Now here in figure three, we get subassembly C, and that shows our valve covers being glued onto the engine block, and then our injection shields going on up here. And then we've got our steel exhaust manifolds, and it shows that it's steel on the top here, and then aluminum down here and steel on this little ridge. Then in panel four, we get our final engine assembly. And here we see our power steering reservoir being glued up here on the cylinder head. 
and then we've got our air conditioning compressor going together here and our alternator and our belts and pulleys. Now figure five shows our wheel assembly going together and here we actually have a choice of either the stock chrome plated wheels or some custom ones that are in gray plastic where you can paint them to body color. Now always keep note of the direction of the tire because these are Goodyear directional tires. They also have little arrows in the sidewall. So just make sure that everything is pointing to the front. So there you've got your wheel going into your tire and the rear wheel retainer as well as the inner wheel. Now this is the same for all four wheels. It's just a difference of the narrow ones are in the front and the wider ones are in the back. And always make sure you keep that directional arrow pointing forward to the car. And here we have our interior assembly in figure nine, where we get to see our instrument panel and the steering wheel being put together and then dropped into the interior pan with our two bucket seats being put in place, as well as our shifter lever going into our console. Panel 10 shows our chassis assembly, and a lot has not changed over the years in these AMT Ertl kits from the uh, first one, I think, in about 1984, 1985. So here we've got our chassis pan right there, and then our front suspension glues down, and we've got the control arms on the both sides, left and right, as well as our drive shaft and our differential, and the leaf spring housing and differential mounting plate, and then our control rod, and all that will assemble together and give you a really nice undercarriage. In our next panel, we want to flip the chassis over and then drop in our Corvette, hooking up the rear transmission to that differential or the drive shaft. And then we've got our inlet duct going on the front of our plenum cover here and our radiator hose and the radiator in two pieces as well as the upper radiator hose. So what I would suggest is to put this down first and then drop your engine in and then you'll be able to hook up your inlet duct onto the top of the radiator. Here in subassembly 12, we see that the chassis gets flipped over once again to the underside. We have our spare tire carrier going on the back and then our exhaust system, the back part, dropping in over top and our exhaust mufflers hooking up here. Then we've got our X member which goes on as well as the front brace oil cooler and our torque arm here going onto the side of our transmission right along where the drive shaft is. So what you want to do actually is on the exhaust system you want to glue this one on first just to connect it to the headers on our engine block and then hook this into the back. There's a bunch of holes and pins that help you get this all aligned. Panel 13 shows the final chassis assembly. Here we flip the entire chassis with the engine over again so the engine is on top and then we just put a little bit of glue on each of the points and push our wheels onto there. And there's some underhood decals which also drop into place just to dress up that engine bay. Now body assembly four shows our painting preparation. And here we see that the entire engine bay is painted with semi-gloss black right up into the windshield posts. There we have our hood being placed down as well as the nose panel. Now this is just to hook it together so you can paint the entire thing as a unit. You also can put on these optional side rocker panels or they're actually exhaust manifolds as you can see. So again, that'll make it all look very, very cool. Now once you have your hood painted, you can add in these hood hinges and the inner fender wells. And then over here we see our red taillights being put up into the back. Figure 17 shows our engine bay assembly as well as the hookup of our interior and our windshield into the car. There's our rear view mirror which also goes in there. Then we have our battery and a decal for the top as well as the coolant recovery tank and the heater and then our master cylinder. Here's our final body to chassis assembly where we can see that the body drops down onto the completed chassis. Just be sure to uh, be careful trying to snake some of this stuff around in here just so that everything lines up nicely. Also keep in mind that these little hood hinge pins are right there. So you're going to have to really put that in first then swing the body back down just to make sure that these don't get broken off or anything. 
Figure 19 shows our engine bay assembly with our AC line dryer hose being put in place as well as the windshield washer reservoir, our ASR module and the computer box. And there's decals on a few of these components so that'll really dress up that engine bay. And now for figure 20 we again have a final body assembly. They really like saying final assemblies on this instruction sheet. Anyway, there's our assembled hood, which you've got to put on these little pins up on those hooks and then cover that over with the nose panel. There's our side turn signal lenses and our front ones. And then in the back, we've got a license plate decals. You've got your choice of three and then the optional convertible top that's put up in our rear window. One thing about the rear window in this model on the real car, this was the first year they actually used glass in here instead of that uh, plastic, the clear plastic that they used to use. And it was also a heated rear window. So that was one of the 1994 refinements. And here we have our decal application in figure 21. Here you can see this nice 1990s decal going up along the side as well as on the back behind the rear wheel. Now I'll be taking a look at the decal sheet in a little while, but first I'm going to pass it all over to Trevor so he can show you exactly what the plastic pieces look like. Here's the body for our 1994 Corvette, and it looks really good. Out back here you can see the Corvette emblem on top of the fuel tank door. And then you've got the rear tail light and our sunken in Corvette letters, as well as 1994 right there in the license plate shroud. There is a seam line that runs up along here, which you'll need to remove. And then we've got these wonderful side scoop vents in here and the wraparound front end for our turn signal and parking lights, as well as the sunken in Corvette right on the front license plate. Under the hood looks really nice, a couple of wires in here and whatnot. And again, we've got our sun visors up top. And if we flip this upside down, you can see that there are a few mold marks in here, which you'll have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade, as well as a seam line running up in here, mold marks in the front, and a little sink mark, which you'll have to fill. But again, you know, you want to get rid of those so that everything fits nice and tight up underneath. But overall, I do believe that AMT Ertl made a really good effort on this body. Next up, we have our wonderful chassis pan. And again, you can see the nice detail work in underneath that everything looks accurate to the Corvette. And just turning it over, there are mold marks in here, but they don't seem to be anywhere that's going to affect much of anything. You might want to take them out of this brace here, as you could see that through the top of the hood. But again, overall, really, really nice work. Our next parts tree includes our dashboard, our hood, and the components for the hood to open and just to cover those hinges. And then we've got our gear shift lever and our seats and our interior tub. So again, bringing this up to the camera, you can see the excellent Corvette symbol. I know there's a bit of an issue with some of the hoods lining up to close properly on the AMT kits that the monogram ones do not have, and I'm not quite sure why. There's all our instruments going around here, and again we get our three pedals down below. So this is a standard type of transmission in here. They all also get the airbag in here. And then look at the nice seats, look at the texture and detail on there. Now these are all going to be leather, there's no more cloth going on in the Corvettes. And then here we've got our interior tub, and there are some mold marks in the corner here on the carpet. They're also in a position where they're angled, so you've got it on there as well as a flat floor. So that's always going to be interesting. There's our door panels with the latches, which came out quite nice. And we've also got our center console. This is quite a clean mold actually for the AMT Corvette, which again is quite nice. Now here under the hood, we've got some really severe mold marks. These are actually like coming right out of the plastic. So again, that number 16 hobby blade. And we also have that wonderful texture on there, which simulates the fiberglass matting. Now here I've got not one, but two, count them two, parts trees. This one has the X-frame for underneath the Corvette, just to help brace it up because convertibles have no roofs. So there's our upped top, as well as our front suspension component, 
those side exhaust pipes, and our custom wheels. Now let's just move this one to the side and bring up the undercarriage so you can see that we've got our rack and pinion steering in there as well as the nice detail. And then there's our custom Corvette wheels. And in the dead center, you can see that nice Corvette emblem. So again, really, really nice pieces made by AMT. I'll bring this one up now and you can see underneath there are no moldings under there but there are mold marks so you will have to remove those with your hobby blade but on the top the texture and the ribs are all in there so again it ends up looking very very nice so there's those two parts trees now this parts tree is quite sparse for components but you do have your drive shaft and your drive shaft brace as well as the radiator hose and our air conditioning hoses there's the front bracket for the front of the car up underneath and then we've got our spare tire carrier and our exhaust pipes and our mufflers now in this parts tree we get all our engine components and you can see there are a lot of them in here as well as our front fen inner fenders and our wheel backs and wheel retainers and there's our rear differential components and our radiator equipment so let's bring this all up to the camera and just take a look i love this uh, mesh grill in here on the transmission that's pretty cool and then there's our cylinder heads the oil pan take a look at this uh, nice intake in here all that crisp detail there's our Corvette covers for the fuel injection setup. And then our rear axle once more. And then look at the valve covers and everything. Really cool stuff. Let's turn it over. Look at all the detail in on those pulleys. This time it's not using that really complex serpentine belt. It's just using a more shorter distance serpentine belt. Again, there's our fans on the back of that radiator. So again, what can we say? other than this is quite awesome. And here we have our chrome parts tree. And unlike the last edition of Corvette that I reviewed on this show, we don't have the nice Lotus chrome plated engine block. We just have the top of the engine, the front cover, and a bunch of the little engine components like the alternator. And we also have a rear view mirror in here somewhere. And there's our stock wheels and some more of the air conditioning hoses. So once again, check out the nice detail on here, but just know that we've got the upgraded motor outside of the Lotus block. Really, really great detail. Again, some mold marks that might interfere with a few of the parts, but that's easily removed with that number 16 hobby blade. So again, enjoy your chrome on your Corvette. Here's a look at our clear components with the front windshield. And you'll notice a little clip down here and two little circles. That's just to help hold it in that windshield frame. There's our rear glass, and here's our front and side marker lamps. Now it did say the instructions that the side marker lamps are smoke color, but here you can clearly see that they are clear. So you might want to take a look at the front of a 94 Corvette just to make sure if you need to paint these. And then in the back we've got our semi-rectangular style squared tail lamps. Again, these kits Parts are really, really nicely done. And if we bring them up to the camera just a little bit, you can see that they have the nice lines molded in just to make this thing look 100% like a 94 Corvette. Here we have our Goodyear Eagle directional tires for our Corvette. And we have two different sizes. These are the narrower ones in the front and the wider ones out back. Once again, the tread pattern on these is really excellent. And you can see the direction in which all these little bumps are rotating into. And then on the side, there should be some directional arrows on here showing which way goes forward. And remember that the front on the right hand side is going to be going in the opposite direction as the front on the left hand side. So just keep that in mind to always keep those arrows pointing forward so that all tires in the end will be rotating to the front. Again, nice raised letters on here, and really easy to paint and detail. Hey everybody, it's Danny the Dog once again, and now we're going to be looking at our decal sheet. And here you can see the wonderful colors they've got for the side door panels. This is really a 1994 type of stuff. You know, lime green and the uh, fluorescent red, I 
Ooh. Anyway, there's our under hood details, which look really cool. We get this Corvette 50th anniversary license plate. And then we've got a license plate for the Virgin Islands. And I'm not sure what this license plate is from. It says uh, great places, great faces on here. So if you know what that one is, write it in the comment section down below. But once again, we do get some really nice decals for this model kit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at our 1994 Corvette convertible by AMT Ertl. And if you've built this model kit back in the past, uh, let us know down in the comment section below just how much you enjoyed building it or did you face any real complications? We want to know. Also, if you want to see what model kits that we currently have available, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca where we have a whole list of model cars. And if you'd like to support the Monster Hobbies Model Car Museum, don't forget to click that join button down below. And for just $3 a month, you'll be able to help support us in our efforts to build a nice museum in order to display my models and my dad's model cars. So thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in our next unboxing.